Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the new Ocarina of Time item randomizer tutorial. The developers just released version 3.0 and with it we thought it's about time to release a new and updated tutorial video on how to set up the OOT randomizer. I'm Tresco and at the end of this guide you will be able to generate seeds with your very own custom settings and play them on your PC using the RetroArch emulator frontend. If you're not on Windows, please use the invite link to the Discord that's in the description below. You will be able to find tons of tutorials, a sassy bot I made and lots of helpful people that voluntarily devote their time to assist you. So be nice, okay? Okay, let's dive right into it. As you can see, I just opened the GitHub of Amazing Emperors, who's the main developer of the randomizer alongside a few people from the community. So you can find this using github.com slash amazingamphoros slash ot minus randomizer, but it will be also be linked in the description. This randomizer is a Python program that can be used to randomize all items and certain more things in Ocarina of Time to enhance your experience while playing. So let's just download this app and look what it does. So let's go to the releases tab and now download your version. Um, for this tutorial we're going to use the Win64 zip but you can also grab any other binary you want to uh, you want to use. So let's download this and save it to the folder I prepared and it's already done so we will just extract that what we which we will do right now and you will find this folder having four different files in it. The most important one is the readme that you can find here. It's also up on the GitHub, so um, you should read that first, but it's also linked here. Um, compress and decompress can basically be ignored, and the OT randomizer access is what it's, what's important. So two notes for that. If you have trouble opening the app or compressing the ROM or whatever, add those four files, or at least the folder, to your antivirus exceptions. Some antivirus programs have trouble starting these kind of apps. Second, Windows has a weird file system and um, permission system. So if you push this folder to your per, uh, program files directory, it can screw up if you have weird permissions. So it's probably better to just put it on your desktop or anywhere. But okay, let's dive into it. Here we go, we just opened the randomizer and we are welcomed by this wonderful box. So this is all you need. What you will need is a base ROM, an output directory and so on. So you might wonder, where do I get this base ROM? So yeah, we cannot distribute this because it's copyrighted material by Nintendo. But maybe there's a few helpful hints in the Discord. So if I go to the Discord and go to the resource tab, here we go, welcome. Uh, you can see that we have a resource channel for all your information and it might have a bit of info on how to grab a 1.0 USA ROM, which is what you need to generate a seed. There's also a render bot that might be able to help if you only have the right command. Hmm, what could that be? But okay, let's go back and talk about our settings because I already have ROM, so. Here we go, I will select my ROM, which in this case I have here. And I selected it and I will also put a, an output directory. Usually that's the OT randomizer folder and the output directory. But in my case, I want to put it to um, just to the, the root because um, it, will, it will be easier for RetroArc later. So create spoiler log. This actually generates a text file next to your compressed ROM that's full of information about your seed, about the playthrough, where all items are. And if you uncheck this option, you are responsible yourself. Because if anything goes wrong, if you need help with the seed and are stuck, we cannot help you if you didn't create a spoiler log. So in most cases, just keep it checked. Just keep a spoiler log. It's for the better. Just don't cheat if you are in a race setting. Just don't cheat on yourself, on your opponents. It's better to have it, just saying. Compressed ROM. Like, 
Listen, never, ever, I repeat, never, ever go for a decompressed worm if you plan on playing this seed. You, usually no one needs uncompressed worms. So just keep it compressed. If you don't want a worm output and only a spoiler lock, you can check that. But yeah, just scratch uncompressed, you won't need it. There's more like default targeting option and that's vanilla stuff. And multi-world generation is a really interesting concept for co-op playthroughs of the randomizer. You might want to check that link right here to test runners bizhawk repository on git. And we got dive into the different rules and settings now. So let's go over. And as you can see, there's a ton of options here. I won't cover every single option in detail because that would take too long, but pretty much what you need to know when you hover over the checkbox the OT randomizer will give you in detailed information about this setting and what it does. So, for example, Open Forest will remove Mido from the path to the Deco Tree and remove the Kokiri Boy from the path out of the forest, and so on. There's more in here, certain drop downs for certain sanities to make the game even more harder. You know that stuff, token sanity, and so on. You can even dungeon quest. Uh, change your dungeon, dungeon quest options and add master quest uh, difficulty stuff or like dungeon layout stuff and mixed to make it even more fun. Detail logic has a more deeply within the game functionalities like um, it messes with the logic which is basically the um, backbone of the randomizer guaranteeing that every single seed is finishable and completable. Uh, and you can manipulate that using this tab right here. One of the most known options is fewer tunic requirements, which allows you to enter Water Temple, for example, without um, having the Zora tunic and so on. Other also has another few speed ups and miss stuff, just something like fast chest cutscenes or skippy pona ways, which means um, being able to call Epona having these Epona song without raising Ingle first. There's also text shuffles and difficulty settings. And finally, cosmetics, which is about the background music, different Kokiri or tunic and Navi colors. We use completely random in our tournament builds and mostly that's the option most people prefer. So after you set all this to what you want, you can see while I'm messing with uh, certain options here. The setting string is constantly changing. That setting string is basically your password to load your settings or like your keyword to load your settings when you open the randomizer again. So if you have uh, an option, a settings uh, configuration that you enjoy, just save your setting string and you can just enter it here and import to set all the needed settings. So once we are done with this, we will just add a seed or not. For this, I will just do tutorial the uh, randomizer and then I press generate patch drum and now the randomizer will create a seed and this seed pretty much um, shuffles all the items around and based on the logic changes your playthrough and then compresses the ROM which is the step that takes the longest but it will take less time with every repetition so since this is the first time it will take quite a while but not that bad Okay then, so once this is finished, we have a finished ROM that's randomized based on our options. And now you can see success ROM patched successfully. And since I just did that, it will appear here. So now we have two files, the spoiler log and the OT with, with the setting string tutorial randomizer minus comp. Z, uh, Z64. That's your ROM. That's the one you will, pl be, will be playing later. So keep that in mind. Next up, we need a way to play this. So if you have an EverDrive on your N64, that's probably a super easy way for you. Just put the Z64 file there and play it on your N64. But not a, a lot of people have this available. So you might either want to play it on the VC, which requires you to inject the ROM into a base WAD file you can find explanations on tutorials for that on or in the discord but I will 
explain how to play it on Retroarch, which is probably the best emulator to use for the Ocarina of Time item randomizer. You can also use Bizhawk. You can find another tutorial for that in the description. And you can even use Project 64, although that uh, emulator is not as good as you might think and will have certain compatibility issues. There's a guide to get around it, but keep in mind that it's still the worst option if you have any other. So let's go into the RetroArch guide. You will find the link in the description. So Raizuto made that and it's a pretty good guide. So first we want to install RetroArch. So just go to RetroArch.com, download your uh, version, which you need. There's even a Switch version in the meantime, by the way. So just download your version. I already did that, installed the 64-bit version. So I downloaded it and installed it. It's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward. And now we're going to start RetroArch. Come on, there we go. So welcome to RetroArch, as you can see, it's a pretty nice over overlay and UI, but it needs a bit of time to get used to. First, we're going to load a core. So RetroArch is just a front end that supports a billion, namely over 2000, if I read this correctly, um, emulator cores. Just a ton, it's not 3000, but it's a lot. So for our use, we need an N64 core. And RetroArch supports two, which is MuPin64 Plus and Parallel N64. Both work fine with the randomizer, it's your perf personal preference. Most people say just use MuPin64 Plus now. So we download that and RetroArch will edit automatically and now it's there. So next up, you need to do one more thing before you're ready, besides adding your controller and joy a joypad. Uh, mappings and stuff that's all on you but you need to add one more thing and that's saving and you want to set the save RAM auto save interval to 10 seconds uh, it's explaining what it does it's just helpful for the randomizer and so that's the only real setting you have to do so now we have RetroArch set up and I open it again because I closed it by accident so now we're ready to just load the ROM so we go to load content and we go to the folder directory I just created a ROM in, which is in my case the double point, uh, double point, is it actually double point? I don't even know, slash, and then we have our cool OT ROM right here. So we open that and then it asks us which core we want to use, in our case we want to use Mupin64 plus and boom, welcome to Ocarina of Time as you all know it. And it will be the randomized seed you just created. So this is pretty much all you need to know about OOT randomizer setup. If you need more information, if you're on a different um, PC, on a different OS, or have certain special questions, just head over to the Discord and ask us there. We will be glad to help and until then enjoy playing and see you soon.